our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for our consideration today is the familiar account of Jesus at the home of Mary and Martha, as recorded by Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This is God's word. Dear Christian friends, the ability to prioritize is one of the most important life skills. Author, educator Stephen Covey describes it this way in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, when he says, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. I'll repeat that. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. <coughs> now what does that mean? <coughs> well, each day we are faced with the establishment of all kinds of priorities. Just a few examples. Uh, what am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? Who am I going to choose for friends? <coughs> Ultimately, it's about how am I going to use the 24 hours of grace that God has granted me each day to serve him with my life. The story of Jesus at the home of Martha and her sister Mary also involves prioritization. The Gospel writer Luke describes the time when Jesus was an invited guest at the home of Mary and Martha in Bethany. As you might expect with Jesus coming, Martha was very busy with meal preparation when he arrived, especially since it is likely that she would also be feeding his disciples. In contrast, her sister Mary was doing little or nothing but sitting at Jesus' feet and listening to his teaching. Our text says it this way, Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to Jesus and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha expected Jesus to take her side and to chide her sis sister Mary for her apparent lack of hospitality. But Jesus drops a bombshell on those expectations when he says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Now, if this story weren't so familiar, we might be tempted to ask, what was Jesus thinking? After all, didn't Martha love her Lord and wanted everything to be just right for his visit? Mary, on the other hand, let Martha do all the heavy lifting so she could just sit by and relax at his feet. Shouldn't Jesus, at the very least, have praised Martha for her devotion and dedication to serving him? But no. That's not what Jesus did. Jesus clearly tells Martha that she has her priorities mixed up. Mary is the one who understands what Jesus has to offer and intently listens to learn more. 
it wasn't that what Martha was doing was wrong or unimportant, it's just that it wasn't as important as what Mary had chosen. Again, in the words of Stephen Covey, Mary realized that the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And what was the main thing in this case? Jesus calls it the one thing needful. To learn why Jesus obeyed his Father's will, came down to earth as a baby at Bethlehem, lived the perfect life that we could not live, and, as we are reminded during this week season of Lent, went to Calvary's cross to die for the sins of the entire world before rising from the dead victorious on Easter morning, a joy that we too will celebrate, Lord willing, in just a few days. That is the main thing. The one thing needful chosen by Mary. The one thing that could not be taken away from her. God's people also need to realize that the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. While we can't sit at Jesus' feet like Mary did in a literal sense, we can prioritize attention to his word by devoting time to personal Bible study and taking advantage of corporate worship opportunities. In our Wells Connection today, we focus on what is most important in the establishment of a church. Is it the beauty of its architecture, the size of its pipe organ, the quality of its potluck suppers, the number of social events on its <laughs> monthly calendar? As nice as all of these characteristics may be, they are not the main thing, the one thing needful. As our synod moves into year two of its initiative to plant 100 new missions and enhance 75 existing congregations, it is important to keep the main thing the main thing. Our churches need to keep preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and him crucified as the main thing. This month's Wells Connection features the story of a young couple dissatisfied with their current church and, like Jesus' friend Mary, looking for the one thing needful. We watch the March Wells Connection. Hi, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. The work of Wells Home Missions comes down to one thing, proclaiming the saving gospel to those who know their Savior and to those who don't yet know Him. And by the grace of God, Wells Home Mission churches around our synod continue to do just that as we enter year two of planting 100 new mission churches and enhancing 75 existing ministries over the next decade. Dan and Savannah Scheffel are New Wells members in Fredericksburg, Virginia. But prior to that, they were no strangers to Christianity. We grew up in the church. I've served in a church my whole life. Before coming to a Wells church, they both served on their local church's staff until a few years ago, when their church experienced some internal problems that led Dan and Savannah to leave behind both their work, community, and their church family at the same time. It was lonely. We had moved here for that church and leaving there, that was our community, that was our friends, that was the whole reason we lived in Virginia and left our families. Um, and it was, it was isolating and, you know, how do you stay close to God when you're leaving a place where you should have been growing closer to Him but you felt further and further away. Thanks to a simple invitation from a friend and the work of the Holy Spirit, Dan and Savannah were led to visit the Wells Home Mission Church in their area. 
The Way Lutheran Church. Would you join me in our confession centered around a remembrance of our baptism in your worship guide? The Way has been worshiping in rented spaces since it launched seven years ago. And now they are putting down roots by buying and renovating a building of their own. It's so easy as you grow as a church to maybe get a little distracted with our capital campaign, our building project, our first church. And so we remind ourselves all the time, keep the main thing the main thing, which means holding out the mission that Christ gave the church, sharing the gospel with our community continually, and gathering ourselves around it. And the way's emphasis on the main thing was exactly what Dan and Savannah needed. One thing that surprised me when I sat down with Dan and Savannah was really their passionate interest in our church body. They wanted to ask about our doctrine of fellowship and just how that plays out in real times. I like the way the sacraments are valued and treated within the Lutheran church. It's definitely refreshing. Closed communion was an entirely new concept for me. I had never heard of it. <laughs> and I had to read a book about it. But it means something. It's not just something we do quarterly and everybody wears a suit that Sunday. It's, we need this. This is God's forgiveness. And how great is it to partake in that? It's not just a tradition we do because Jesus did it with his disciples and told us to do it. This is meaningful. This is healing. This is forgiveness. Through the Way's Bible information class, the Lord opened Dan and Savannah's eyes to what the Bible says about salvation by grace through faith in Christ, the Lord's Supper, Christian marriage, and infant baptism. This new biblical understanding of baptism led them to baptize their baby girl, Ingrid. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It was so meaningful and it just, it felt like full circle because, you know, 2019 we felt so lost and I didn't know if we'd ever find a church that felt like home and that was truly teaching God's word. And there we were all these years later. Dan and Savannah have since moved back to their hometown in Pennsylvania to be closer to family. And they say that they've had a difficult time finding a new church home there, since there isn't a Wells Church in the area. We really want to have um, a, a Wells Church in our community that can be there to serve and be a light and be um, home to the families where we live. In fact, they have been so impacted by their experience at The Way that they have started to ask about how they can get involved with Wells Home Missions in their community. If there was an opportunity for a core group to form and for us to plant a church in downtown Johnstown where we live, we would absolutely love that. The initiative to plant 100 new home mission churches and enhance 75 existing congregations by 2033 continues to be moving forward by the grace of God. At wells110.net, you can see more stories of individual souls who are being impacted by Wells Home Missions, as well as learn about how you can be a part of this effort. Please rise for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, the psalmist reminds us that you watch over our coming and our going. Today, as members of our MLS family travel to the homes of family and friends to celebrate Jesus' resurrection victory on Easter Sunday, we pray that you would watch over them, keep them safe in your loving arms, let no harm come upon them as they travel, and uphold them with your almighty arms that they may safely return to the campus following the break. Above all, grant them the blessed assurance that Jesus' glorious resurrection is a sign that we too will rise from death to enjoy the mansions of heavenly glory in your presence forever. In our resurrected Savior's name we pray, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. You may be seated as we sing the final two hymn stanzas.
Good morning. Uh, this morning we have a guest on campus I'd like to introduce to you, Professor Dwayne Vance, and actually he also his wife is with him, Becca. Uh, they are here. Um, he is our student teaching supervisor. Uh, he's a professor at MLC, so he's here visiting our student teachers and uh, giving them insights and watching them do their thing. So very much a, a welcome to our campus and thanks for being here with us. As Professor Thiesfeld said in our prayer this morning, God's blessings to you as you celebrate our Savior's passion, his work for you, for all of us, his life for ours. Enjoy that celebration in your home congregations. Safe travels to all of you. Look forward to having you back after the break, April 8th. God bless you. 